My name is Gita Jensen, and I'm the research director at NIS Labs. We specialize in research on natural products and their effects on the body. This involves research on natural methods to support the regenerative functions of our stem cells. We found that an extract from sea buckthorn berries has effects on stem cell mobilization. Sea buckthorn is a thorny shrub that grows naturally at very high altitudes in Tibet. The medicinal properties were recorded in Chinese scripts over 1,500 years ago. The multitude of health effects associated with the berries also includes reparative functions. Therefore, based on our experience with medicinal plants, we looked for effects on stem cells as a unifying mechanism. Stem cells are responsible for repair of trauma and injury as well as general maintenance and rejuvenation of organs and tissue. Stem cells need to travel through the whole body to look for tissues that are in need of repair. We worked with an extract from sea buckthorn berry, rich in the complex anti-inflammatory flavonoids called proanthocyanidins. We tested its effect on the numbers of stem cells in the blood circulation. We conducted a randomized double-blind crossover trial in 12 healthy people. The study was placebo-controlled to account for each person's normal circadian rhythm. Blood samples were taken immediately before consuming either placebo or 500 mg of the berry extract. And two more blood samples were taken at one and two hours. The blood was used for immunophenotyping and flow cytometry to quantify the numbers of different types of stem cells. We observed mobilization of several types of stem cells. On the next three graphs, the changes seen after consuming the berry extract are shown with solid lines and the changes seen after consuming placebo are shown by dashed lines. To the left you see the changes in numbers of progenitor stem cells where a highly significant increase occurred within two hours after consumption. And to the right you see minor changes for the complementary pluripotential stem cell type. Here you see results for endothelial stem cells, where a statistically significant increase in numbers occurred within one hour after consumption and remaining significant at two hours. Here you see the result for mesenchymal lymphocytoid cells, where an increase in numbers occurred within two hours after consumption, reaching a statistical trend. When we took into account that different people may respond at different speed, we observed significant effects on mobilization of all four types of stem cells. We conclude that consumption of sea buckthorn extract resulted in mobilization of stem cells involved in reparative and regenerative functions. This data may contribute to the growing understanding of the traditional uses of sea buckthorn for preventive health, regenerative health, and postponing the aging process. And now it is my great delight to introduce to you Dr. Petra Marmo, Ph.D. Uh, Petra has her doctorate in food chemistry from the University of Turku. She's joining us all the way from Finland today. She wrote her doctoral thesis on the health benefits of sea buckthorn berries and oil. She has many published papers on this topic. Yes, dry eye is a disease of, of tears and the ocular surface. And, and the main features are the increased osmolarity, so so the increased concentration of the tear film. Uh, and the tear film is the film that covers and, and protects the ocular surface. And another central feature in dry eye syndrome is the inflammation of the ocular surface. And, and the high osmolarity and the inflammation, they, they cause symptoms like soreness of eyes, foreign body sensation, dryness, grittiness burning, redness, and uh, the condition is more common in women and also in older people, but, but of course also younger people suffer from it. For example, people who wear contact lenses or who have, been go who have gone to laser surgery of eyes, mm -hmm. and uh, external factor factors affect like dry and windy conditions. Mm -hmm. So, so when, we talk about, when we talk about dry eyes, um, in order to try to make it um, simpler. So would it be correct to say that in certain um, problems or different diseases where we end up with dry eyes, the, the film, the, the watery film that covers the eye becomes too thin, it's not thick enough, and, and so it evaporates more quickly? Would that be yes. fair to yes. say? 
Yeah, that's correct. There is too too little water uh, mm -hmm. in the tear film. Yes. Let's talk then about uh, different types of dry eye. Yes, there are two main types of dry eye. There is the aqueous deficient dry eye, and this is when there are problems in the uh, lacrimal secretion. So there is too little of, of this aqueous tear film produced. And the other main type is the evaporative dry eye, when the, the watery layer is produced, but there is excess evaporation from the tear film. And this is because uh, the outer layer of the tear film is an, is an oily layer that is supposed to prevent excess evaporation. But if you have problems in the, in the co consistency uh, of, the, of the oily layer, then there is too much evaporation. And uh, whichever the mechanism is leads to, to too high osmolarity of the film and damage to the ocular surface and inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a vicious cycle because you need the moisture to protect the eye. With a loss of the moisture, you get more damage. With more damage and irritation, you get more inflammation, and the inflammation itself may play a role in making the eye dry, yes? Yes, that's correct, and it's uh, difficult to, to cut it. Well, you did a study specifically on dry eyes with um, 100 women and men, age 20 to 75, yes, with dry eye symptoms. So it was a big, it was both genders and a wide age span. Yes, yes, this was a study led by Professor Heikki Kallio at the University of Turku. And, uh, and all these participants, they experienced dry eye symptoms. And uh, we had an inter intervention period of three months. And half of the participants were randomized to Seabacton group, half to placebo group. And the study was uh, double-blinded and, and randomized. So during the study, uh, we as researchers and also the participants didn't know which product they were getting. And during this uh, period, the participants daily took t two grams of, uh, of Seabacton oil or placebo oil. And at the beginning, after one month, and at three months when the study ended, we made uh, clinical measurements of, of dry eye. There was an eye specialist in the group making these measurements. And in addition, during the study period, the participants daily kept a symptom logbook about their symptoms of dry eye. Mm -hmm. So you had some excellent results with this. Yes, we had really nice results. Because uh, at the end, we saw beneficial effects of Seabacton oil on dry eye. First of all, there was uh, good effects on the osmolarity of the tear film, which, which is kind of the gold standard measure of dry eye. And also, when we analyzed the symptom logbooks that the participants get, the symptoms of redness of eyes and burning of eyes were less severe in the Seabacton oil group compared to the placebo group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's most likely the joint effect of all these uh, compounds that we talked about earlier that has made this, made this happen. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there has been effect on this inflammation that keeps the vicious cycle of dry eye going and on the effect on the oxidative stress. And uh, new research by, by other groups have also shown that uh, uh, carotenoids, uh, which have the pro-vitamin A uh, efficacy and also essential fatty acids, uh, can have effects on the differentiation of these cells which produce components to the the film. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You know, um, the next clinical study you did was on um, a disease called Sjogren's syndrome, and many people had never heard of this until American tennis star Venus Williams actually had to withdraw from competition for a while because of Sjogren's syndrome. So can you tell us a little bit about 
uh, this autoimmune disease? Yes, yes, certain syndrome is on, like you said, an autoimmune disease, which, which means that the body produces antibodies against its own tissues or cell components, and, and there is a chronic inflammation going on in the body. And, and in Sjögren syndrome, there is an infiltration of, of white blood cells to, to exocrine cells uh, of, of these plants which produce, which produce uh, moisture to mucose membranes. Uh, so, so this syndrome damages the salivary glands, the lacrimal glands, and also the exocrine glands in nose, respiratory, and gastrointestinal system, and, and, and vagina. So this, this causes the typical symptoms, which are the, the dryness of mucose membranes, of eyes, mouth, and, and mucose membranes in general. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so tell me about your study that you did on women with Sjogren's syndrome. Yeah, this was a study, study by professors Paulu Young and Risto Erkola, and uh, this was a, also a placebo-controlled double-blind study, a crossover study this time, so the participants changed their group in a randomized order during the study, and uh, 25 women with Sjögren syndrome participated. And the study period lasted for three months for for both products, for the Cibacton and the placebo, and uh, during this period they daily took uh, three grams of, of oil. And the effects of the oils on the symptoms were analyzed using, using so-called visual anal analogical scale evaluation by the participants, so they evaluated the, how bad their symptoms were at the beginning and at the end. So again, you got some uh, wonderful results with this study. Yes, the results were very interesting. In the, in the first phase of the study, a greater proportion of the participants, significantly greater proportion of the participants in the c group compared to the placebo group reported improvement of, of overall symptoms of dryness. And this included symptoms of, of genital mucose membranes, dryness of eyes, mouth, nose, and also to other symptoms related to to Sjögren syndrome, like uh, tiredness and, and joint pain. Uh -huh. and, and when the both study phases were analyzed, there was significantly greater proportion of participants who reported improvement of symptoms of genital mucose membranes. So itching, burning, pain, dryness. You know, a lot and of people think of Sjogren's and they think of the eye dryness and the mouth dryness, but they forget that it can also be extremely problematic with the, the vaginal dryness. Yes, yes, that's true. And, and there were many, uh, many, many parts of vaginal dryness analyzed here, and, and, and the results were very, very good. And, and again, most likely, it was a joint effect by different components in Cibacton, seed and bulb oil. On the so it's important to have that wide spectric, that wider spectrum of nutrients uh, to make sure that you're going to be able to replicate the results of the study, correct? Yes, that's correct, because each of them have a little bit different mechanism and, and way of affecting, so, so it's important that, that exactly the same composition is used as in the studies. Mm 